and they said that in here, the carpet they were running, there's a little magnet, there's uh, an adjustment wrench, and tap handle, whatever you want to put on here. And then you can rotate this, and feed in, and it's got some really pretty perfect constraints. Is there any question on that? Yeah, Does anybody want? I'll make a phone book. We got a number. Uh, if you're interested in making a note, give me a call. I don't want to take up the other people's time and don't come along. Next time we talk about indexing, we'll give you a little more time you can go and somebody has a good book out there with these different charts for segments for the people who are saying that they're goals. You can put this onto your face plate and just pick out the one that matches the number of divisions that you want. For the people who see now starts bowls and they're, they're laid off the car, they need to be stepped off nicely or they don't look very good. So if you can choose one of these patterns, rotate it around and they wouldn't start somewhere, and then mark your own. These people run around it really quick. Especially if you can put a face plate on there, it will sit behind the jaws and press it onto the body of the chuck. Then you can hold your bone, you can take it here and out, whatever you want. Then take this around and mark it. If you're going to do a batch of them, and you're going to do some of the different segments, and you put a different segment up there. The caliper that's going around is it has an oil on it, and it has the ring nuts. And those are two things that will really make you glad you did. The first time you pick up an old undersized caliper, they will not expect to keep it in. Or especially when you're in a car. <laughs> Sorry? I got you. Okay. This is what I use a lot when I just have a few pieces to drill a hole in the center. And there's these heads on these screws, and these heads catch on the core of my stop. I slip it on there and rotate it, and you can, you can add a bunch of stuff, raise up hill, and now it's the center. So once I've done that, that's going to be too low. You drop it on, rotate it, the center. You buy a home 316s, and they have these countersinks. Put on your grill. Bring the camera sink upside down so that it bottoms out against your hard motion here. Now it's a depth stop, and you know exactly what you've got. Put the other in the bottom here. And if you decide to make one of these, I've worked out some of my up. So that the spacing on these overlaps a little bit, but not ridiculously. I don't want to have one that will do almost both sizes. So you start out small, and as you go bigger, you step out because the value grows to some amount better than one of the other ideas. It's a little bit rectangular. You know, if you're using a Center finder, you end up having two lines mm -hmm. and then you're going to find a little of that thing. Right, right. Yeah. It doesn't work well. Right. 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 I can see it's right. the difference right. in the size of these. It worked on both of these. And it will work on even a much larger one of these. I mean, it's just a lot of room to tell you. So it was going from here to about that big, about four inches or so. If you do have a piece, it's off, and you know what side is off. You know where you want your center hole to be. Let's say it's off an eighth of an inch. If you pick up an eight inch shell and you stick it on that side right there, that's the problem. 
can rotate it around and hold it in place. And that centers it for you. Every once in a while, somebody will come in with a table leg right that is not square at the top for some odd ball reader. You have to figure out what you're going to do. Most of the time, I do it in my hand because it doesn't work. Why a drill versus just a center? If I use the center punch and I don't have a flat air on it, you do a lot of Western Red Cedar, Hemlock, and the walk on it. If it's pointed, it will walk. If it's blunt, you're okay. But then I still have to find the center. And this way, it's so fast, I'm not looking at a really great player. And and you first set on my down. So it's pretty quick out there. If I'm doing 20 and 30 of these, I have a little mechanism with the drill bit in here. And I have an adjustment heat block. And I adjust it up and down so it's straight on. And I get one little bit. I do it like that. And that. And it does. And you make it turn. Yeah. I have not had 100 of these in a couple of minutes. Is that a question? <coughs> okay. Now, sometimes they're dandelions. People that like to make things that aren't quite that simple. The neat part about this one is it's self aligned Did I squeeze that square a little? It's already centered. So that puts these arms where they need to be. This only came about because somebody brought me some stock that they had cut to eight size. And what I did, the other one that's very simple, it was based on the increments of squares. You know, with eight size, the arithmetic, the squares doesn't work because you want to not be able to get the corners. So I had to come up with something that would be the octagons. So that little square went in there, and you just push it up against it and lock it down. Same way the other one, put it in the rotate it, and it's over. That's it. I think this is way too complicated. I, I think it's more of a thing if you like to do stuff like that. If you knew you were going to have eight sides, just do your rhythm tip for that so it would work that way. I saw this in our box here. If you're going to get one of these, make sure you don't get one like this. <laughs> There's some flats right on the front of these teeth here. I don't know if it will pick it up on the camera or not. Yes. See how cool how bad that is? And the reason we're there is because the teeth are so short that the teeth were hitting on the tool rest when they put it up there to progress it but they'll pay into it. The next part is, is these feet are supposed to be in the tool rest. This is supposed to be around 90 degrees right here, and that hangs over the front of the tool rest, and it sits on here like this. And you slide it back and forth across there. And there's a lot of people who will argue with me and tell me that's wrong and all that. And how many manufacturers do you know that will go through all the trouble to build the jig and jig this thing up and brand me perfectly square across there just with free because it looks pretty. They're not going to do it, folks. The reason why is it sits on the front and there's no light on the feet. And I, I even found some literature from, I think, like the late 1950s or uh, late 40s or early 50s about this thing. Now, this one is very simple. You just take the stone and these fresh fractured pieces. You took a piece of glass and you smack the corner with that means that's really sharp. That fractures that stone the same way. If you have a good nice piece of sandpaper, and that same folks used to do this, you take two pieces of sandpaper and weld them together. Well that used to be important because they didn't grade them as well. When you got that one big 30 grit on that 80 paper, you got a squad. They're well braided, they're well separated, and now what you've done is you flatten it out. 
when you use a diamond dresser on your stone, you flatten it out. And they might be sharp on the edges, but they're still flat. The notebook is flat, and I get it in, so that's if you slide across it right. But if you left it like the surface that that gives you, it is far more aggressive. And, and that's cooler, too. As we said, we're going to go further with curve chasing. Well, due to the kindness that got into my wood, that's not going to happen. And this stuff throws a tremendous amount of dust all over the place. This is the solid surface material like chlorine or some of those others. It cuts nicely, it dresses nicely, it sails well, and it's hard to come up with this thick of stock unless you glue your own. And when, you, when they take out the old counter, it's that glue that's on there. So I just saw that off, just squared it up a little, turn it down, and now I can dress that. We pass this around, you can see how heavy this stuff is. And it's a little rough on your tools, but it does not destroy them. If you decide to make your own printing tools, chasing tools, closer. This tooth right here must be a full tooth. Well, that's really good artwork. But it must be a full tooth. If you come up here like this, and if I have a tooth, as this trails across, it doesn't cut all the way down. So now as soon as you get down to this part of the supposed to be cutting, it jams on you and eats your teeth and eats the threads out. So all you do is just make it so it's a little off to one side and just keep grinding away until you get a full tooth. And then it works fine. I should take this across here, don't pass it either way. Did you make this? Yes. For $70 a set if you buy them, you can get them. Now, don't anybody ever think I'm a fan of the Chinese. The SOB is trying to kill me in Vietnam, and I don't care if they all start to death. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan of, of that stuff. But the Harbor Freight tools are, are, are $7 for a whole set of them. And I'm going to take a torch to them and soften them and modify them and all that. I don't want to buy an $80 set of tools and get that torch to them. So. Well, that's the first thing that you can also buy the rest uh, from the catalogs that sell the chasers. You go to Lowe's, you get a piece of the steel, take it towards, salt it, hammer it out, bend it over, take the edges off of it, and turn the back so the back is smooth so it slides easily across your wrist. And when you go across there, and you feel these bumps and things, you need to be cleaned down, and then come back and try to get it. That's the worst thing to do is you go along and all of a sudden it hangs up on your treasure board. There's a lot of information on thread chasing. And since I won't have wood that I can turn, there's not going to be a mess and skip that way. Is there anybody in here that does not have a band saw? Just a couple. Okay. If we have them there, when we cut these logs, you clean the bark off first, it helps you get rid of the lava dirt. If you're going to keep the bark on it, hold it down, do something, but it really eats up late. When you set your guides, sometimes I see people up there and open the nut that secures both guides. If you only open one, then the other one's got to leave. When you come back, you slip your two pieces of paper in there, you push out of that and lock it in the preset. Instead of trying to figure out which way the little bump and the blade goes and where you got to go and back and forth. And it really saves a lot of time. Would you say we're half the people? How many people have a grinding jig? Oh, okay. We're hit on this now. You can, 
You can adjust your tool and you keep looking down and you can see where you're at. You take the marker and put it on here and then walk back and forth and look to see where you wipe it away. You put a piece of paper on there and go back and forth and it will scar your paper directly under where your contact was. Then you can come down or up, whichever you want. You can rotate the paper and you can kind of see where the pivot point is. If it's too high or too low, you can adjust it that way. And especially if you've got it over near a wall, and if you had dirt on the wall, you can figure out how to get some dirt. Well, if it gets the wall, well, that's kept coming off. And with this way, it's fairly quick. Last time we talked about homemade tools, you can't buy this particular skew, which you can buy the Richard Rapid Spray tool. It has this shape to it here. So if you need a large skew, that's what you should buy. You should knock the corners off though, so they don't hang up in your tool rest. And it's practically ground for you when you get it. You just have to put the metal on it. The homemade tools for that one. You got that out of the wrench? You did. Yes, sir. Well, I lost it, man. There's one right here. There it is. Right past the log there. Is that what you want? That's what you want, but that works. It'll do. Did you cut this with a file? A file with a pocket knife? Uh, that's a good pocket knife. <laughs> it was. Uh, I took a little block of wood and cut a curve there that was just slightly smaller than the thickness of that metal. And I drilled and tapped that piece of wood. What, what thread is that, 16? Okay. I drilled and tapped it with a 16 cap. The larger the cap it is, the better it is. And then we would make, I super glued those threads in there to give them more strength. And then what I did is I slid the holes here. I slid that in this way and then I tap them like this. And that cuts my teeth on here. As you do that, it's going to keep pushing it out. And, and you'll have this thing step down like this. And then you are a pretty good one up here and almost nothing. But you just keep pushing it back. And what you do is, if you've taken it out to look to see what you've got, and then you tap it, and then run it in until you catch on one of those teeth. So you tap the ground down, and then cock it down the hill, so that it's just pushing it out, and it's going straight down the end. And you just keep doing that until you get a good, clean, sharp point, both at the top of the tooth and at the root cover. Are you using, when you run the, uh, are you using a bolt or a tap? Tap, real tap. Yeah. And, and when I, I, I made a curve in there while I've got to clamp that thing. That metal is still soft. If you have some valve grain, valve panel, then you can put some of that in the inside of that wood. When you clamp that down, it clamps it rather tightly. If you don't, you can just take some sandpaper that is not waterproof, put some water on it, get the grit off of it, and put that inside there. So you've got the piece of wood, you cut a curve, and you've got a hole and let your curve the water falling past that to give this more room to flex. And you just tighten it down, stick it in your bench place, whatever it is. Then you, you tap this way for this one, and what you do for your female chaser, you put it in this way. There's an important thing to look at, and, and unless you plan on using like an hermaphroditic chaser, where you got where it does both male and female, then you want a little bit of an angle on those threads. So when you put your curve in there, you put your curve not dead center, but off center. So now that gives you your angle. And, and you put your angle in there so that it's easier to chase. You wouldn't want it up here and you try to cut onto it that way. Put it down here and cut onto it this way, and you tap it to hang up on your bag. And then once you're done, press it clean it, look at it real good, and then that would have happened in the middle if I punched it in 16, so I know that's 16 threads, and then harden it. You can 
you can take a piece like this, and you can hold this whole way and it snap off when you detect it. I only have to that much this last drill. And when you chase threads, it's a long pass. You do not hold it. It's, it's physically impossible to break those teeth off of there if you use that thing with a hand break directly. So, and unless you're just fanatic about it, just get the thing red hot, quench it, and clean it up and use it. And I've tapped, I've tapped brass, aluminum, steel, and chase. Corian, wood, and plastic. With this one that I made prior to 92, when I, I retired from one in 92, and I made it prior to that. You know, it was in Saudi in 90, so it's 22, 23, 24 years ago. And it's not broken too far yet. Because it's, I mean, you're just making the finest sawdust. It's a part of very good sawdust. We've had extremely dry weather. This got rained on once. I was working outside of Lockwood. It got rained on once. The sun hit it, and the wind blew. And that's how much cracking I got for one day. And when I cut the red tip, so that was only exposed for 20 minutes. And this time it's splitting on the ends. You got a black one right there. I do most of the spindle work, but there's a little piece of paper going around for the sanding mechanisms. That's really nice. <laughs> Gosh, it's a lot of overwork. It is, it tells you about the fact it still doesn't work right. But you got an 8 millimeter hole in 5 16 Yeah. So don't do it. When you buy these from the catalog, it's a one quarter inch shaft. So if you can use it as a one quarter inch shaft to start with, you're ahead of it. There ain't a method. If you have a uh, we have a girl rescue mission, helps with bill pads and alcoholics and stuff. And they sell things. I bought a pair of roller blades for eight dollars. One set of batteries and bags are talking about dollar thirteen cents for a set. Those okay. good. If you happen to have gotten the one that has the bushing in it, like this, then you've got some more work to do. If you look at it before you bought it, and it's just clean down here like that, that's the one you get because the working is already in it, and there's no extra work to do. <coughs> it's a really good idea to clean the dirt out of these things. Because when you start trying to cut them loose from there, that was a tool in the hurry. And I believe, are these the number two jaws? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are the number two jaws, and the wheels have to be fit in there very nicely. You won't do a lot of this thing, we're just going to go through steps so that for the people who want to know, we've got an idea. And those that don't want to wake up for the next step. So. They all start to run, but they have to Cutting. 
it's not deep enough and it's a touch small. You just press this on there and check your size. You should have been a little larger. But it's much better than slide the other than it is over because the slide the other is going to make it work. It's over the size you can. That's good. When you've gotten that far, we're not going to go all the way through everything. This bag actually started working out a little bit. You can see it's starting to ooze out the back. Remember, you got that long, and you break through it really bad. You can leave it like that, and I, I recommend that you get cut all the way through from this side. It seems to be better. And I've made this a lot bigger than just the side of my tool. I like to cut away every bit of this yellow out here. And that thing's good for when this, when this breaks loose, it doesn't go all over the place.
just going to press into here. If it happens to be loose, take maybe three strips of paper and go across this way. Don't put a whole piece because when you do the whole piece, you get that crumpled up corner and then it won't go in all the way. So just a little bit. The inside of this PVC, it's just a very, very small ridge in there. Yes, we can see that. <coughs> very small. If you don't put a washer in there to sit on that ridge, this thing will push all the way on up into there and just keep going. Washers are kind of funny. Sometimes you can buy a washer that's called a four inch washer and get a definitely fit your five sixteen volts. And sometimes you need to get on a three eighths. So this is whatever diamond it was, was not big enough. So I took a hammer, just handled it out, just handled it on the edge until it fell out and enough. And it's pretty quick and easy to do. You can see it's kind of funny looking in the story, but it's fast. Major sanding pads, and you need them to be longer for some reason. Then you need to drill an exit hole on the back side of here. And where the piece like this is going around, uh -oh, lock the doors. <laughs> okay. We're going to hit on this part right here. If you do have the long one, and you get ready to reach up in the bowl thing, and it falls out, that's kind of scary. And I just made a little simple chunk of wood, quarter inch hole, flat area, and press it on down, it doesn't fall out. If you buy the ones for the store, you usually only got that low, and they will clear, you don't have to worry about it. He said it's time for a break. So if there's anything on the kid on if you've got questions, I'm up here. And we'll take a break. It's not that loud, Terry, just because you're right near the speaker. Oh, okay. I'll leave it alone. Well, we can make them, which I have a habit of doing. Your LED rod is, the, is what they call the uncoated quarter inch steel that Lowe's and Home Depot. So I bought a Three foot length of welding rod, quarter inch. You can, if you have a die, you can secure your die in here. That makes it perfectly square with the steel that you're feeding into it so that the shaft and everything lines up properly. So you put the chuck on here. You lock your die in there, and then you got your steel in here. You feed this forward in your die and you turn your head with it and it cuts your thread. And everything is just straight in and square. You can buy bolts and cut them off. The problem is that you should you take a caliper with you if you buy bolts. 
In the old days, they would take a one quarter inch piece of steel and cut away material to get that size thread. Today, they don't cut it away, they squash it. When you squash down, something's got to give and it comes up. So this is not one quarter inch, it's undersized. So it defeated the whole purpose of finding the ones with the quarter inch hole in it. So that's why, and, and then you have to go through the trouble of cutting it off and cleaning it up anyway. So if you just want plain rod, you cut it the length, tap what you need, then it's a much easier job. If you went out and bought a David Ellsworth gap, they cost you 80 or $100 or whatever they cost, you might feel badly about doing this. This bolt, and I haven't heard it's been hardened, you need to face it and you have a hole in it. And that hole needs to be dead center so that the center is going to do a little work. When you buy these bolts, they got all the funny little marks on them, and they go down on the top. The tools are high speed steel. You can take a lot of metal off of these things. in a hurry with these tools. Should lock it first. You can put oil on it, you can lubricate it, you can lard, you can do whatever you want. Did you see it? Okay. So that's all we need to see. We've already made our vehicle in there. So if we were to bring that one quarter inch drill bit up, it would sit in that bevel and would not walk around. And then it would drill straight through the middle. Uh, I'm sorry. That one there is a 3 16th. That's from the hardening mechanism. But I wanted to get that set up and out of the way before we went on. You don't need this much bolt, but you do need thread to go all the way to the top. And if the bolt is long where they have pressed it, it won't be a good one to die up there because you don't have to steal it. If it's a real one, they're okay. It's easier just to buy when they have thread to go all the way to the top. And then you cut it to whatever length is appropriate for the thickness of the stock that you're working with. So it screws down tightly to the top and come down the flash with the bottom. You glue this on, you drill and tap this thing, you screw it in, put some super glue around it, and it stays there. These, this is the real collet system. Is not covered. If you have three inch stock to start with, you're all right. 
if you're going to put a very thin pan on here and the recess your tea got a very three quarter inch rebate in there so that it'll drop down here. It's a lot easier to find in the center on the square piece and it's a lot easier to cut a bunch of square pieces on the table saw. So you cut these things. When these, when these things come off of here, they're flying, okay? <laughs> and you can keep going. There's no way I'm going to get out of the house. Somebody will come in and I need to make something in a hurry and I'll throw a square piece on there. I'll cut close to what I need and then finish them and put this off. And then you don't have a torn edge on the back side and you can come in here and dress the back side. Which is fairly easy to do. Put a 
base of it to help it out away from there. That small plant would be out here, and you wouldn't have to worry about this hitting on your forest. So if you've gotten to this point and you've shaped it, I use the other two more lines. Up under here. And it's just a piece of inner tube. This is really, this is 377, not the million. And it comes off when it's warm. So if this has gotten all and it's been set aside, you stick it in a high speed drill and hit it on a piece of hard maple with a concrete floor, when it's warmed up and then you peel it off. If it's got lots of glue, you just stick it on the next piece and trim around it. If you leave these edges sticking out, it doesn't cut in. It will lift up and it will follow your contours. Does that work with big pieces of Velcro on it the same or with some disadvantage? The Velcro stuff, the Velcro is really faster and, and if you only have one pad, it's nice so that you can just take off and keep going. I have mine numbered because I have three point zero over here. So, I just drop it in and take it right back out. It's even faster than the Velcro. I've read a lot of things and they're saying if you get too much heat in here, your Velcro whoops. Straight down or they do something bad. They melt. They melt. They melt? Yeah, but it's yeah. They soften the plastic. This, if, if you put way too much heat on it, you can soften the glue enough and it will move a little, but you can see that. You just take it all and stick it back on. That's it. This, yes, the 390 for the permanent parts. And then when I put my paper on, I use 377. And, and you can heat it and it comes off. Most people have one way centers. Yeah. A lot of it, if the bearings go bad, it's time to replace it. If you look, there's two holes in here. The span wrenches are made for this purpose, and you unscrew this thing and you replace your bearings. They send it back one way. They send it back to me free. They're doing that it's now. Bad. It's left hand now? It can't be that bad. I, mean, I, I don't change it. Yeah. They change it. That's good. If you can, that's, that's probably a few or better deal than this one as far as the bearings. Yeah. Is there anybody that has one of these axe minster? Multi. I do. I have that. Just me and you? Oh boy. This thing is great. It's a great. This is just barely under three quarters of an inch. So if you're doing furniture repair and you've got to put a three quarter inch tenon in there, you bore it with three quarter, put a little piece of tape and paint down here until it's a good press fit, and it's good. If it's the next size, it's just bigger than one. That's just bigger than one and a quarter, and that's just bigger than one and a half. These come out nicely, and what you've taken apart and replaced the bearings once, if you drill a hole all the way through, I actually grease my bearings during use. And you pull this out, stuff grease in the hole, and while it's running, press it down in until the grease comes out the back, and I re grease my bearings. And I replace these about, oh my gosh, six years ago, six, seven years ago. How many hours? A lot. So this is my favorite one. And because it's so easy to replace them and keep them lubricated, I don't mind putting extra pressure for the for purposes of the stock when it's a problem. Uh, with a one way, because uh, I didn't know that, yeah. it was a little harder to change it, but I fine tune it. But this one, I can just crack it down. I think I had it in the back in four days. You can't beat that. So they killed that part. <laughs> <All right. laughs> this drive center is really, really nice. This one we talked about last time that just bites in a little bit better than being spurs and messing it up. And if you make one of those, then you go ahead and make the flat on it also. Better. 
I need that. Let's see if we can use this a little. Hey, it works. Piece. 
when you have this in here spinning, your fibers not align, so they're laying this way. When you came along the sandpaper or something, you're still laying them down that way. When you turn this around, now you're pointing this way. And when you came with your sandpaper and your fibers are this way, it's still up and broken off. And it's just so much faster. That's it. All right, anything else? Yeah, any questions on anything?